Welcome to another video. Let's solve another system of equations similar to the ones I solved recently. And remember, it is always good to look at the two equations and or three equations depending on how many you have, but see if there's a common pattern in the equations. As you can see, the denominator of the first one is x plus y. The denominator of this one is also x plus y. So you might start thinking, maybe I need to replace x plus y with something. But why don't you look at a bigger picture? What is bigger? Rather than x plus y, what about 1 over x plus y? Okay, now I give you a hint of what to do. Just use something else to replace that and solve it. And maybe you want to try that on your own before you continue watching the video. But if you don't want to wait, let's get into the video. By the way, this question is from Denmark, 2009. The first time I saw it, I just immediately saw a pattern in the first one and the second one. So I, in my mind, immediately knew I was going to rewrite this to look like this. So, see what I did? I saw this to be 1 over x plus y plus x equals 3. And the second one, I saw it to be 1 over x plus y times x. So in my head, I did this. I wrote this as 1 over x plus y multiplied by x. I think that makes a lot of sense. So this is the sum of two things being 3 and the product of two things being 2. It's just very straightforward, right? So what I told myself is I said let, I use k, be equal to 1 over x plus y so that the two equations I'm solving now become k plus x equals 3, and the bottom one becomes kx is equal to 2. And remember, it's the whole idea of factoring. What two numbers will you multiply to get 2, but when you add them, you'll get 3? Okay, so clearly this tells us, this implies that k is equal to 1, and x equals 2, or k equals 2 and x is equal to 1, whichever, however you want to arrange it. And based on this arrangement, we can go back and find which one works. So let's start with the first case, case 1. We have x is equal to 2. When x is equal to 2, we have k will be equal to, what did we say k was? 1 over x plus y, which is 1, which implies that, what did we say k is? 1 equals 1 over x equals 2, 2 plus y. So if 1 is equal to 1 over 2 plus y, it means what's on top is what's under. That's why you get 1 here. It means that 2 plus y equals 1. So 2 plus y equals 1, which implies that y is equal to 1 minus 2. So y equals minus 1. So one solution, you got x equals 2, y equals minus 1. x equals 2, y is minus 1. That's one of our solutions. Okay, now let's go to the second case is where k equals 2 and x equals 1. We've got to try it and make sure that what we get makes sense. So, um, case 2, x equals 1 and k equals 2. So, it means if we do the same thing for k, we have k equals 1 over x plus y. So that means 2 equals 1 over, what did we say x is? x is 1, 1 plus y. Um, what does that mean? If we cross multiply, we're going to get 2 plus 2y equals 1. I hope I'm doing the right thing. And we have 2y will be equal to minus 1 when you subtract 2 from both sides, so that y is negative 1 half. So the second set of solutions would be um, 
What do we have? X equals 1, and Y is negative 1 half. 1 and negative 1 over 2. So it looks like these are the two solutions that are available. So we can say X, Y is equal to the set 1, negative 1 half, and 2, minus 1. That's it. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.